Okay, so here's the setup. I've got the two machines side by side. This is the um, Gigabyte motherboard. The model number is a bit hard to see. It's down, down here. And these CPU coolers, they're a little bit underpowered, so I just uh, put a 120 uh, millimeter fan on top. Um, here we've got the hard drive. It's a Western Digital 640 gigabyte with a SATA to RD adapter. I just created a 60 gig um, partition on my other computer and that was it, ready to go. And down there is a DVD drive as well, all on the same RD channel. There's a stick of 512 megabyte RAM there and the graphics card is an NVIDIA Quadro uh, 4. I believe the model number is called is a 980 XGL or GXL or something like that. Um, it's the equivalent to the GeForce 4 T TI 4800. Um, over here we've got the a open motherboard. The model number can be seen here. Same stick of RAM. Same hard drive, also a 640 uh, gigabyte Western Digital. Same SATA to RD adapter, and here we've got the same graphics card. Both machines have the latest BIOS. I'm using a fairly modern um, ATX power supply from Gigabyte on both machines, and here we're just running some benchmarks. Okay, here we're looking at some CPU Z screens. Um, on the left side, you can notice that the uh, core clock speed is a little bit lower than on the Intel, so um, that might have an impact or it might not. So here we've got the Intel one. So let's have a look at some of the other tabs. Uh, that's what the cache tab looks like. Mainboard. And here the memory. Now, it took me quite a while to fiddle around with the memory timings and to get the uh, same speed. So this is the uh, Intel. So let's have a look at the other caches. Mainboard and memory. For some reason the frequency and the uh, ratio doesn't show up, but um, I don't really think that is much of a big deal. Then under SVD, graphics, I'm using an NVIDIA Quadro 4980XGL, and that's really it. And over here, we've got the same stuff. So same stick of RAM, 512 megabyte, here's the same graphics card. Everything is identical. Okay, under DOS we've got 3D Bench and we're getting 864.8. Um, and the Intel has 105.9, but it's actually faster. It means it's uh, faster than 999.9 and it just doesn't have enough uh, digits. So a little bit faster in this benchmark for the Intel. In PC Player Bench we have 363.8 for the VR and 415.1 for Intel. Okay, and now we're looking at the Doom benchmark. Here, the VIA is actually faster, 652 real ticks, so the lower, the better, and we have 871 on the Intel. And here we have Quake for the VIA, 213.1 frames, and for Intel, 222.5. And now we're looking at some high resolution DOS benchmarks. So this is PC Player Bench at 1280 by 1024. We have a frame rate of 25.5. And for the Intel, we've got a little bit hard to get to 29.7. So slight lead for uh, Intel when it comes to high resolution benchmarking in PC Player. Okay, and here we got the results for uh, Quake, the DOS version. Also at 1280 by 1024. So for the VR we've got 17 frames. And for Intel we have 22.1. Here we've got 3D Mark 2000. We have 9880 for the VR and 8540 for the Intel chipset motherboard. And here we got 3D Mark 2001 for the 
there we've got 7768 3D marks and for the Intel 7, 7234 and here we got Forsaken um, it's running at 800 by 600 resolution but in 32 uh, bit color so we have 422.37 frames for the VR and 383.01 frames for the Intel Okay, so this is GL Quake at 640 by 480, which is a very low resolution to test the processor. We have 658.3 for the VR and 601.6 for Intel. So here Intel is lagging behind a little bit. Okay, GL Quake at a higher resolution, 1280 by 1024. We have 323.7 frames for the VR and Intel clocks in at 319.6 frames. So once again, Intel a little bit behind the uh, Okay, here we got Quake 2. So 331.6 frames for the VR and 284.9 for Intel. And here we got Quake 2 at a higher res higher resolution, 1280 by 960. We've got 308.1 frames for the VR and 278 frames for the Intel. Okay, let's look at the storage performance. So the main thing that stands out is there's a larger difference between the write and the uh, read performance. So on the Intel, it's a little bit closer. Um, apart from that, the numbers are slightly higher, I would say, on Intel, but it's really, really close. Now, um, on this one, in the BIOS I actually had to change uh, a setting to change it from UDMA 33 to the faster mode. Um, it, it, it had an option for the uh, cable, which, what type of cable you had. So if you left it in auto, it would have, was actually performing a bit slower. So that's something you have to uh, keep in mind. But DMA mode works fine on both.